we're going to disconnect the front axis from the front differential because the oil pan is rotted on this thing. Like yes. Yeah. So yeah. So um, we're literally going to take the front differential out of the vehicle so we have access to the oil pan, and then we need to jack the um, engine up so that we have access to get the oil pan bolts. You can't even see the front oil pan bolts. Yes. Buried. So, so if you have one of these tenders, you're probably going to watch this whole video and sit back with a beer and a bowl of popcorn. <laughs> Guess we're going to be having some fun over there in the sun, right, Steve? Yeah, fun. Yeah, fun. We'll say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one's a 12 millimeter. We're we'll taking off. We have to bang the socket off. My little hammer here. Yeah, it is. We're going to grab this with some ply. Oh, it should just... It's like prying right up. There it is. It just has a little squeeze tab that pushes into the bracket. So we're we're saving this flex hose and we're replacing this steel hose. So when we get when we come time to doing that. So Keep in mind, you have a four piston caliper here. And a lot of times these pistons seize up. And if you look at this the way this is worn, these bolts seize up. Look at how they've rusted and swollen. Put the light on there, Tony. These have all rusted and swollen up. And then the pads won't move. And the pistons always seize up on these. So if you're doing this job and you can't get the pins out, you have to drive them out. And then you have to find out if your pistons are frozen before you really go any farther than that. So we're, this, this guy bought new rotors and calipers, so that's saving us time. We're just going to peel these off and get the rotor off. That bought this shit box. All right, so we got the bolt out now. We'll pry the caliper back a little. And we're going to just peel this caliper right off. Man, the back and plate's just rotted right off of this thing. Because we're going to be popping the axle out of this thing. Because we're going in deep. So we're going to take this cotter pen off. I'll tell you the size of the nut. We're going to loosen that up. And we're taking the whole spindle off right now. So we have a nut right here and a, and a cotter pen that's rusted the crap. We're going to take off for the tie rod end. And then we have another one down on the bottom side here that we have to take off and crack that loose for the lower ball joint. And once we take those three items off, we'll be able to pull this spindle right off. Yeah, this thing's friggin'. It's mint. <laughs> well, right now we would be able to remove the axle if we just pulled this down, but you gotta disconnect the tie rod in to get it back. All right, we went down to a 17 millimeter and Cotter pin was rotted, so if we want to reuse the tie rod, then we're just going to have to drill it out, which we can do that. So. Okay, I got that off. Man, this thing is just. I'm going to have to lift the suspension up a little bit because it's weighted down. There it is. Okay. And our sensor broke off in here, so we're gonna have to drill the sensor out. And let's get this big nut off right now. All right, so we got a 35 millimeter socket on the only thing that's not rusted on this vehicle. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna leave it on, bring it a couple of threads. And we're going to give it a tap just to make sure that it moves. And I hope it ain't frozen into the... We'll keep it flush because we're going to hit it, the hammer, just to make sure that it moves. Yep. Okay, that went good. All right, we, we banged the 15 sixteenths on it. Okay, we got that one off. All right, so we get the tie rod bolt off. We got... The ball joint bolt off. We're gonna get the axle nut and take that off now. And then we're gonna separate both of these. And uh, we're on our way. 
Okay, so we're gonna unbolt the ball joint. It's a bolt on because we're throwing the control arm away because we have a new one. So we're gonna unbolt these. Of course, they got rusted in here. Well, if you weren't doing the control arm, you could split the bottom of the fork, yeah. right? Yeah, and it, we tried and it really didn't work out too good. Everything is just rust on this vehicle, so we're kind of replacing a lot here. So we'll take it out and bang it in the vise to get it out. Everyone's gonna be like right. So typically to get the axle out, Steve, you would split it right there with the fork like we were starting yeah. to do, and then you could swing the knuckle up to get the axle out, right? Right, yeah, the axle's all ready to come out now, so, which is good. So we're gonna get this other side of the ball joint. I'm gonna cut my tie wrap and flop this thing over now so it's out of my way. Just leaving this on to kind of hold it for us. And I can roll this up like this. Earlier we had the rotor and the caliper on, so it was really heavy. Now, not so much now. So we'll get these last two 17s off. Another thing I wanted to mention is we had taken the A-arm of this vehicle out in the shock and um, we're doing replacing all that stuff. So if you didn't need to replace all that, you could undo what we're showing you to undo and swing the knuckle up to get the axle out, right, Steve? Yeah. So just wanted to clarify that for you guys. Um, we got a lot going on with this truck. Try and tap it down here. The only thing holding on was the rust. They got some a lineup dowels here that were on. <coughs> Take the nut off from the axle here. Can push the axle through. Okay, we have to get this sensor that's broken out on the bench and work on that. Put this back on the axle just so my threads don't get damaged at all. So, again, if you were just doing the axle, the AM um, typically would be connected up here. You could swing it up and out of your way and sneak out the axle. All right, we got a little pry bar in here. We're going to see if we can get this thing to pop out. Oh, yeah. it's, it's coming. Yeah, it's I think the rust is holding it. Rust? Yeah, and it won't be when we're done. We knocked half the truck on the floor. Oh, here it comes. So to get at the pan, you've got to do the same procedure on the other side and take all that apart, right, Brian? Right. <laughs> so Brian's working on the other side. We'll get that ripped apart and we'll try to tackle this pan. we got to remove the diff bracket. we got the oil pan. It looks like there's two of them, huh? Got one on each side and another bolt in the back. There's one here and there's another one here. So we're taking the bolts out of both of these. So and the third one in the back. It's kind of, it's an Allen head. Oh, uh, there's one right there. Uh, that's going to be fine. So we've got to take all those out to remove that bracketry to gain access to that pan so we can change the seal. Yep. yep. Did you get a new pan for it? Yeah, yes. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's in there good. You get the handle for the 20 ton joint. So you're going to use a 7 16 Allen to get that bolt out. 11 millimeters. It's 11, it's 11 mil? Yeah. It's 11 mil. Oh, and it 
comes some more rust. It's everything you need to do to fix the oil pan leak. So we might as well leave that connected until we get it back <laughs> in. So if you have an oil pan leak in one of these tundras, you might want to sell it to your best friend, right, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about best friend. I know, I know I didn't refer it to my best friend. But I think I'm Brian best passed friend. on the truck and said, hey, look what I got for you. <laughs> so are you listen and see? Can you take it on? No, it's going to blow. It. Oh, it's not fucking, man, it's fucking rotted. Holy smokes. I say just cut the hose. There's got to be enough flex there that we can push it back on. Well, that's this, this is, yeah. Well, this we is, can do that once it's out. <laughs> yeah, but then we're going to have to fuck with the hose. hose. All right, that's off there. And then this one here. Go on. You know if you need pliers, Steve. Yeah. Wow, that's fucking. It's just like everything else. I'm yeah, I'm not getting it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think there was a clamp at one time on this that rotted right off. Oh yeah. There's a whole popular engine like that. There's a half a truck that rather than right mm. off. There's a bottom of the engine like that too. Mm. So I'm doing these two hoses. This, this line's, we're gonna have to put a rubber hose on this fucking thing. I'll see what it goes to. I can see better over here. Yeah. I think we're gonna be cutting this thing. I heard a creak. You got it? No, I didn't. Hold on. The pushed that off. This little piece is just nothing there holding that. Yeah, I'm just going to cut it. I hate to cut it, though. Yeah. Let me get fresh hands on it. Hold that. It's the top side right yeah. there. Yeah. The lighting, oh, the lighting crew is actually more than filming. You be careful with okay. that. <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking, it's, it's like rusted up to here. Yeah, it's probably got a bulb on the end of it too, probably. It does, I can see it. You know what, a little, uh... So now we're going to be to remove the differential. Okay. So. You want to take this bracket right off, you said, right, Ryan? Well, I don't know. Let's, let's see. Yeah, I think you just need pull to the, lift the back out. Can you pull that out? Stud there. Hold on. Let's get the. Yeah, I think we need to get in there and pry it because it's just. There might be a bush up there or something. So I think that that's why he did this. To get this side up. Maybe. Well, maybe he was working by himself. He was. Yeah. You want to pry this up? All right, you hold on to that. I'll, I can get it from here. Oh, okay. 
Did anybody stuff rags in this? Yep. Yeah. On that side. We are gonna have to go from this side. Lifting. Oh, you know what? No, he he lifted the transmission up to do this to get this out. Uh, so we need to get the, the jack under the transmission. Without, without a <coughs> Well, let me, where's that LED? What are we doing now, Steve? We're taking the rear transmission bolts off of the, the mount to the transmission. These are 14s. These look like 12s, and they look pretty, pretty thin. So, uh, loosen these up. Okay. <clears throat> Jack the transfer case up a little bit, right? Yeah. Same as those, but on the other side. Yeah. Maybe we can kind of, the rear end's hanging up right here. So if we support the um, transmission, we can give it a little bit of a lift. And, These uh, are all cracked loose. Squeak that by, squeak the rear end out of the, the differential out. Yeah. This side, I think. Yeah. All right, so we're going to jack the transfer case, get those bolts out. It's like Jaws, the boat's in the middle. <laughs> Is that it? Is that good? Tell me when to stop. I think we better off getting the fire bar in here. I'm trying to. All right, let's see. We're losing some bushing parts and stuff now. Is that. Watch out. Poke a hole in the thing? No. <laughs> That's an extra step. That's a sense of adventure. Man, that light is blinding. Sorry. I gotta get the light up here so I can see Tony come over. How close are we from that stud if I can poke it through a hole? We're at three eighths. So we didn't really gain shit. And we're hitting the pan right here. Unless we can swing yeah, this over like that. Everybody watch the toes. You're, you're on the, the transmission here, right? right? What if we pull that flange well, off? Well, hold on. I think that that's why maybe he yeah. we pull that flange off of it. Nah, we don't want to do that. Don't move it? Oh, yeah, it's lost the cleanest nut that I've seen on this. It work. I'm gonna keep all this shit on the back of the up there. <clears throat> all right, let's see if we can pry this thing up and get it. Let's see if we can get it lifted. Let's see what happens. Try pushing it over to the left a little. Instead of lifting it forward, lift it to the left. I think that that's the trick here by looking at it. Way up now. Oh, it's just about out of the hole now. We just need a whisker more room. Let me see if I can get this you, up. You're up. hitting the pan though, right? Yeah, yeah right you're here. hitting the pan right here. That's why if we have the Well the that like I said, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I can lift it straight up and it came at you like a friggin' so, bowling ball. <laughs> the thing came it's almost flying right out of here. That's just the, that's the vent. So I'll get on right now. Well, for it. Brian, we undid that yeah, ear on the side, normal, yeah, right there, and then we lifted it up okay. on the right. tail, right? So it, doesn't have to it was tricky. You had to take the side oh, no, bracket off. Yep. And you had to kind of like pinch it in a little. Yeah. Yep. So that the the yoke was on the front side of the transmission yeah. mounting yeah. part point and then kind of like lift it up yeah. into the left. Okay. As soon as they did that, yep. it let go and came out. Yeah, it, it's probably 125 pounds probably. It's, yeah. You're gonna need a couple guys to... So before you do this job, practice on a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> and now we'll, that will sharpen your skills. Yeah, right. And now we can... Start to uh, attack so this. This pan. is all easily accessible. Now, does this help us get to the mounts? Um, we're gonna we're gonna lower the transmission back down to where it is, 
and then we're going to put a block underneath the oil pan. We're going to jack, disconnect the two motor mounts, jack up the oil pan, and put a block in between the crankshaft pulley here and the frame to hold this up because we have to get the bolts for the front of the oil pan here, and they overhang too much. There's too much overhang here, and we, we have to get this off. So you can't even see the bolts for the, for the, uh, the front of the oil pan here. It's got to drop down. All right. This is a big job, huh? On this truck. <laughs> yeah. So it's fine. So now we got to loosen up the motor mounts on both sides, so we can jack up the motor a little bit to get the clearance of the oil pan. Yeah. I right, see. Yes, we do. And uh, these things are so freaking crusty. Yeah. This is bad. Hopefully, those will be better than these. So we're gonna work on this, so we'll get back here. Oh, Hold on a minute. All right. We got the light. So we just did, undid a couple of clips right here that the harness was in. Yeah. And we just put our pickup in here and rolled this down, and then popped this thing out. And uh, both motor mounts, mounts are free. Yeah, we had to cut them. So now we got these out. We got the harness loose. We're just tucking the harness down underneath the pan because we're going to sit a block right here. And, um, and we're probably going to take this oil sending switch off right now. It's in our way. We could probably get around it. We'll see. Let's jack it up and see. There she goes. That's right now. We've got to jack the pan to access the bolts in the front, right, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Looks like we can get to a little. Can you? Yeah. Okay, right, so we got a wedge here, uh, a block in here. Well, we're gonna keep this like this for now and then try and get these front bolts out. Okay. <clears throat> so then we're gonna have to get to worm the pin out of there. You've got to... You should just drop down in the back and come out. So you're gonna put the piece of wood in there so we can get the pan out, right, Steve? Yeah, well, we're going to take the bolts out of the front of it yep. and then piece, put a piece of wood in here yep. so that we can lower it down between the crankshaft harmonic balancer and the flat part of the uh, frame. I see what you're saying. So it's going to go right into the harmonic right, so balancer, we gotta get these the frame. Bolts, yeah, so we got to get these bolts out first. So before we do the wood, we're going to soak these with fluid and uh, see how they come. Okay. Yeah, you should only do like 12 pounds. Yeah, so right now we're working on getting all these bolts out of the front of the pan. And once these are out, we'll get a shim it with some wood and uh, take the rest of the bolts out and take the pan down, right, Steve? Yeah, and these bolts are, the heads are a little rusty. We're going to get something to wedge up underneath here to push up on them and, uh, and get them off. Fortunately, they're, like uh, Dave's saying, they're only about 12 pounds of torque, so they're not very tight. Yep. And uh, so once we get a socket on there to grab, we're going with a 10 millimeter. Some of them are probably going to be rotted down to a 3 8 but I'm going to start cracking them. We're on my way around. We have all the bolts out and we're trying to separate the pan. And it's not going to spoil it now. There's two studs in this thing that are holding it on. And we're going to. Looks like there's one in the rear. Where's the other one in the front, Steve? Yeah, right in the front. In the front? The left, the left front corner. Okay. I'm going to leave this in here for a wedge and then get another pry bar and start another spot. Okay, it's time to get down. That's the crustiest, crustiest pan I've ever seen. The joy of it all. It's time <laughs> to come down. Show the SpongeBob doesn't come crawling out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Said there's one in the front, so we're gonna break the seal up front now. Make this short pry bar. So fun and games, Steve. Break the steel seal, Steve. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, there's another. There you go. All right. You sneak it right out that way. Huh. Holy smokes! Look at the pan. Is that? That's a rod hole right there in the pan. Where? Right there, where my finger is. Oh, yeah. It's rotting right through. Come on, you got another 100 grand right out here, of that. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was... So we're going to scrape all this gasket down with the razor blade and dry this all down with a clean rag here. 
and uh, get it nice and clean. We got, you can use silicone. I like using urethane. I have this 3M urethane gun that we're gonna use. And we're gonna clean this all up with a nice razor blade. And uh, this is gonna take a little bit. When we come back, it'll be all cleaned and prepped. And we'll show you how we urethane the gasket onto the pan with a real thin coat on both sides. And then we're gonna apply it. Okay, so we have a, a urethane. We're putting a really thin coat on here. And I'm gonna swirl it all in with my finger. And we're gonna put the gasket on. And then we're gonna put another thin coat and swirl it all in so it's flat. And this is 3M urethane. It's a special gun for this, but I'm sure you can get a squeeze tube and you know, it'll do just fine. But um, the silicone, yeah, it works, you know, but this stuff, the amount of work that we went through to get to this pan, I'm putting a product on that I know is not gonna give me an issue. So we have a gasket for this pan. So what do you wanna do to help stick the gasket to the pan with the stuff? Yeah, and I'll show you. I'm gonna swirl it down flat with my finger. Yeah. I'm just putting a thin coat. Yeah. And then we're gonna do the gasket on it, and then we're gonna put another thin coat and I do this on all my diesel engines as well. It really works well. So I'm just taking my finger and I'm just gonna just give this a little swirl. I'm just flattening it out so it's all over the pan. And I put probably a 3 16 of an inch wide bead on it. And I'm just covering all my holes, everything with it. And then we're gonna stick the gasket to it and now we have some porousness that we showed you guys in the in the block. Well, it's like a spacer plate in between the cast iron block. And so we're just going to swirl this all around, all the way around. And then we're going to stick the gasket on. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And like we were saying, our uh, our block, the spacer adapter plate there in between the cast iron block, it's aluminum, and that has some pitting in it. And when we put the gasket on, we put this on top of it that's gonna take up that space. And like we said, this is a real pain to, to take this pan off. There's a lot of work and um, I'm not gonna trust silicone with this and I'm not gonna just trust the gasket by itself. So um, this is my insurance policy right here. And Tony knows how much work we went through to get this thing off. Oh, this so. thing was a bit, you know, <laughs> if you've gotten to this point, you're halfway there and you're ready to go down the other side again, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we took the, the dip front differential out and we found out that the vent tubes were all rotted on that. And Tony will go over and show you that in a few minutes. Okay, so now I got my gasket right here. And we're going to sit this down line up my holes and there's two bolts uh, studs that stick out of the spacer adapter plate on the engine that are going to line up with this and we're going to go we can take a couple of bolts right now I'll take a couple of the old ones and we'll just stick them through to make sure my gasket's all lined up here. A couple of different spots. The stuff sticks really good. Okay. All right, we're gonna put down a second coat on now. Okay, we're almost ready, Dave. All right, so let's get the second coat on this thing. We're basically doing the same procedure. I'm just going to put like an eighth of an inch, uh, three sixteenths inch bead down here. <clears throat> so again, this is the three M stuff, Steve. Yes, yeah, three yeah. M. The adhesive. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a special gun for this. They probably sell it in a squeeze tube. In the auto parts store? Yeah, it's really convenient in this form right here. This gun was, I think, about 80 bucks to get this caulking gun, but um, it really works. It really works well. 
Yeah, so why we're putting some on top of the gasket is, like Steve said, the old pan that we showed you had rotted. It pitted the engine block, right, Steve? Yeah, it pitted the adapter plate that's in between the block and this. And uh, all right, so now we're going to help to fill it in. We're going to do our <coughs> swirl here. This stuff hardens up, uh, you know, within an hour, this thing's nice and hard. This stuff you can use for sealing, you know, motorhome roofs and uh, a lot of purposes for urethane. We've had really good luck with it on um, oil pans, on Cummins engines. Um, I do the same exact procedure on a 6.7 liter diesel Cummins engine and um, it, they don't leak. And the Cummins gasket material is very similar to this. So after we get this all swirled up and down here, we're gonna put our uh, couple of bolts through again and then make sure that gasket's all lined up. And then we're gonna, basically we're gonna line up the studs as we'll show you how you gotta slip the pan on. You gotta push the pan back towards the steering rack and then feed it back towards the front of the motor and we're going to get a couple of guys with lights to make sure that this thing goes on absolutely perfect. And it's nice because it's got the two studs sticking down, so it's going to be easy to line it up. And once we get it in place, catch a couple of nuts on it, and we're on our way. I just like to um, swirl it around so I get even coverage all around it instead of just doing the bead this way here. I know the whole gasket is covered and if I have any pitting, I know I'm gonna cover that area. All right, so we're gonna go up over the top here because we don't wanna hit the cross member. And then we're coming back up here It's like playing operation. We're on it. We're on it. You I'm, in. It? I'm in. You, you, in? Hold, you hold it there. I got I'll, the pin. You ready? Let me get this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You got a couple of bolts in there to hold it in place. Edge that doesn't go straight up into the case. Out here, these are open ended. On the sides? Yeah. On okay. These big T's here. Okay. I have most of that. Uh, right, so we're gonna work our way around the pan and yeah. we're gonna loosely put the bolts in. Then Steve's gonna go around and snug them all snug up. Them a lot. Yeah. Okay, this thing ain't going anywhere. Alright, so we got all our bolts in and um, we end up getting new um, five six well the five sixteenths are eight millimeter heads on them and they're um, six millimeter by one threads. And we got new ones so that the other ones were so rotted, it was ridiculous. And these have pan heads on them, so they're as wide as the other tens were. And we're gonna start in the front by snugging these up. And you know, I put that two layers of urethane on here, and you can see as I'm snugging this up that the urethane is oozing out. So now I know that I got a nice even surface and we, we're going to show you the other pan. The other pan didn't even have a gasket on it, just had a thin coat of urethane from the factory. And I'm just snugging these up. I'm not garroring them. And I'm going to go around. And these are the hottest ones to do in the front. And we have the block in underneath the crankshaft. And I don't know how you do this on the ground. I got to be honest with you. It would totally suck. So we're going to go around and we're snugging all these pans. And like they said, as I'm tightening this, you can see the, the urethane just squeezing out a little bit. So I know I have an even application on there. And I know that it's, it's flowing out and I'm just snugging it up right. And this is going to set up and it's, it's not going to leak. So I'm going to work my way around the whole pan. 
and then we'll come back and show you. So we went around and snagged all our bolts, and now I'm just gonna take my finger, and you can see the gasket in between, and we're just gonna clean this up a little bit and just wipe it down, just so it looks nice and clean. And we're, you're basically pushing all of the urethane into the gasket. And I'm just gonna run my finger all the way around. And anything that oozed out is just gonna get pushed right back into the seam here and cover that gasket completely. It's gonna make it look neat and it's gonna help it. It's already tacking up really good. And that looks nice and clean. We're gonna do the front the same way over here. You can reach around the front here. And do the same thing. Just run your finger along it. And you're pushing it all right in. Around the back side here. Well, let's get the front. Yep. We get that block in the way. <clears throat> I'm just going to push this harness down. Run my finger across it. Just kind of making it look neat. And it's going to help it make sure nothing leaks. We gotta go over to the left. Oh, yeah, There's the hole here. Oh, yeah, I got it. You wanna take a light and look up? Put the, the light. Hole? Let me see this. Okay. It's gotta come back more. Just about oh. there. How's the prop shaft looking? You hit the oh. tranny? It's gotta come over this way, Dave. Okay. Too much. <laughs> Right in. It's gotta go in the father. Okay, there, there it is. Go. Okay. Right behind you. Alan Wrench with the nut on it. Hold light. Yeah. And that Alan that's gonna secure it in place, right, Steve? Yep. Don't go too tight because we wanna get the spacers in. Alright, I just gotta cut. Be able to let now, it go it now. feels like we're hitting something. We're hitting this right here. That's why that has to go in. That's okay. Good. Yeah, we're All good. Right, so we put that bracket on next, and then we put the spacers and these two bolts in. Now, is there spacers on this bracket too? Because we're doing a lift kit on this thing, right? Is that what it yeah. is? A lift kit. So, so the bracket that we have over here, I'll go get the spacer. Has a, a spacer lift kit that goes in here. So this bracket bolted on should be like this, just like this. And then when we lift it up, there'll be a lift kit. So I'm gonna pop this, these bolts on right now. Where are the bolts? They should be right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah. So this is the lift. Okay. Bolt this on. Leave these as 17s, we'll let you know. Okay. So we need to put these bushing caps back on. Yeah. Then okay. the spacer. And then the new bolt will run up through everything. <clears throat> that space is to the left. And, and There's no washer up on top? No, nope, there was no washer before either. All right, they, so before we, we're going to put the other side in with this, but we're going to put some Nevisees on this thing right now. And, um, and we'll probably get the Nevisees this other one too. 
So we'll come back to it in a minute, but we're gonna never seize the bolts and everything so that it's gonna be nice and lubed. Put the harness back up in place. So you gotta do this before you lower the motor back down. Yeah, it just gives you more room and it's, it's funny, it's not. Yeah. So we finished. There it is. Um, push it into the plastic. Is we finished bolting up all these bolts, tighten right. up the bolts right there, the differential, the one there, yeah. one there, and this Allen yeah. bolt right here. Yeah. So those are all nice and tight. Steve's gonna finish getting the wire loom uh, clipped back into place over there. Then we're gonna come around on the back here, and we're gonna reattach the drive shaft to the yeah. back. So now we gotta yeah. hook up the motor mounts, right, Steve? Yeah. And we gotta push it back a little bit. I got my bar and I have to pull it back and just back forward a little bit. Yeah, there's two holes. There's one there and one on the other side. Uh, we gotta undo these to jack the motor up to get the pan out. Um, the original ones broke, so we got some new hardware. And we're gonna get these in. So we used um, 3 8 hardware by like one and a quarter. And I got lock nuts, the grippy treading nuts on them. And uh, they fit because the, the, the actual head of the metric bolts are usually a 17, but these, they use these odd size ones. tight back in it the oil pans back on front differential is back in it we got the the lift spacer here for the lift kit that he wanted to put in here everything's tight we're going to tighten our uh, put our vacuum lines back on tomorrow and plug the electrical connections back into the uh, differential housing for the motor and uh, we're ready to start putting parts back on it Good there? The thing is, the spindle won't spin, so we can't really mesh it into the teeth. Let me try and tap it, see if it goes in. Ready? Yep. There we go. Done. Okay. Uh, this is in the place. We got our ball joint in there now. You can see our hole, so you know where the cotter pin's gonna go. Okay. Back up for the axle right here. Let's get our ball joint tight, we'll tighten this up. Now right, we got 107 pounds to torque this. Lined up, my god, huh? Nice. It's a torque on this 80, Steve. 
Yeah, 80 pounds. Okay. Just snug it up and we'll get the torque wrench here. Oh, almost. I'll just back it off a whisker. It's a whisker, huh? Almost there. You know, we're not going to another hole. That'll put too much torque on it. So we're just going to back it off just a smidgen. Yeah. Hey, it should be good. There you go. We got our cotter pin in there. We're going to just bend it over, trim it. <laughs> so far. the axle nut down now and we'll torque it to 174 pounds when it's on the floor okay we got the slotted rotors these are directional we get the passenger side we never seize the hub sit this on and we're going to put a lug nut on this just to hold this into place for us Okay, wait. Okay, so go ahead. Caliper, it's got a solid mount, but the bracket is part of it. So we're going to slip this on and then mount it, and then we can take these pins out and slide our brake pads in. Okay, and There's no caliber bracket on these, it's just mounts right to the knuckle. Yep. So we got the new line here, and we just want to make sure we can start them good. So we worked the line to get it to start and made sure, put the mirror down there to make sure it's on the right angle. We got this all tight now. So we're going to snug up these two with our flare nut wrench. We're going to tighten it with our flare nut wrench, make sure it's snug. That's good. And that's good. And we're going to bleed after we get the other side all together. So this is going to be the revert, same procedure for the other side. And um, we're going to slip our brake pads in here first right now. So you have one brake pad that has the warning tab on it. And we'll put that on the top on the outside. Just putting a little bit on the outside of the brake pad here. Don't get this on the brake material itself.
could run this right down across like this. Okay. I'm going to move these all up. Line these up with the holes. I'm going to have to tap our bird pin just a little bit more. These have to be maintained. Make sure these things are looped so that the brakes slide on them. Two little clips here. Just call me Brian. Right into that. Okay, we get these in. So we're just going to bleed the brakes on this. And this thing is all set, uh, and it's going to be the same procedure on the other side. In our axle nut here, after we torque this 174 foot pounds, when we have it on the floor, we'll put our clip on with our cotter pin, and that'll, uh, and then tap the dust cap on. This dust cap goes over here. Okay, we'll finish it up.